Welcome to the AR Performance Squash Advantage, hosted by me, Ahad Braza, a former PSA Touring Pro turned elite performance mentor and coach. I break down tactics, technique, fitness, and mindset by analyzing players from the past and present, both men and women. I aspire to teach, empower, and guide transformation. Let's get started. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We're back with another video on tactics, and specifically, we're going to check out Gregory Gaultier in a match of his with Ali Farag. And we're going to look at how Gaultier breaks patterns and the impact that has on Ali Farag. So check this out. I'm going to play two different video clips for you. Regular speed. Then we're going to slow them down at half speed. And you can check them out side by side. And then we're going to get into the analysis. So here we go. First, we get to watch clip number one if you want get your notebook, get a pen, get a paper, whatever you want to write on, pencil, and let's learn. And here's clip number two. Okay, now we get to watch them side by side in half speed. If you want to check them out in real speed, feel free to rewind this video five seconds or seven seconds and then you can check it out again. Ready for half speed. And try to make note of different things that you identify here. I'm not going to give specific clues because I want to see what you guys come up with. Check it out. I'm going to start the replays now. And I'm going to play that for you guys one more time so that you can take even more notes and see the picture in more depth. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So there are tons of subtleties at play. Let's start the analysis. Number one, the first thing I want to point out for you guys is the score. Okay? The clip on the left score is 9-5 compared to 10-9 in the clip on the right. So if I'm not even trying to get into the idea of the fact that the clip on the right is near the end of the game, higher pressure, etc. What I want to call out through the score is to show that the clip on the left occurred before the clip on the right. And the reason for that is important. Because you'll notice in the clip on the left, Goltier, and actually here, okay, I'll, I'll do something I wasn't planning on doing. I'm not breaking down the technical aspect of this backhand drop shot much but I do want to point out the standard things that you notice every single time looking at the clip on the left Goltier has got his wrist up his racket is up it's an open face the feet are pointed towards the back wall the hips the chest everything is pointed towards the back wall you see his elbow is already set up in that V sort of position you can see that even more clearly clearly in the clip on the left He's got that full setup of the elbow, the shoulder comes down, the shoulders rotate, the trunk rotates. And then from there, you step. So you took a two-footed plant in both cases. You bend at the torso and you accelerate and bring that racket through. In this case with the backhand drop, he's cutting it. So he cuts all the way through and then he follows through as well. That's as far as I'm going to get on the technique. We can talk more about technique in another video. Feel free to leave a comment asking for that video, and I will be happy to create it. So now, here's the critical part. You're going to notice two things. Ali Farag's split step position. So remember what I said, the context of the score. The clip on the left occurred before the clip on the right. And what you'll see here from Ali Farag's feet, it's it's a little tricky because Goltier's leg is in the way, but you'll notice that if I forward it a little bit, he's taken that split step. And in both cases, you see he's in the air with his split step. I'm rewinding it a bit. He's in the air over here. He's in the air over here. Standard split step. But in the clip on the left, He's splitting with his right foot slightly in front and his left foot slightly behind because the typical pattern, you can maybe see it better like that, and the typical pattern is that they're playing into the back left corner. So he's putting that right foot first, 
so that he can push backwards into that back left corner because you got to put that right foot down in front and then go backwards diagonally the clip on the left you see that he's not at that stagger he's a little bit more even with his feet because now he has seen the drop from the back corner and this is what we talk about with patterns so you know my question at the top says why why is he doing that well so far in the clip on the left at 9-5 Gaultier presumably had not played a drop from that back left corner so Farag's pattern in his brain was push back go to that back left push go to that back left he's instinctively going into that and that idea of natural deception and I'll link to the video with Cameron Pilly on natural deception Gaultier set up with that same swing that he would hit a backhand drive from or a backhand cross court from or a boast. He has the same swing. He can hit multiple shots. Nothing. He doesn't have a tell. Nothing is telling Farag that he's going to play a drop from that position because everything looks exactly like the straight drive. And presumably he's been hitting deep so far in that first game at 9-5. That's why Farag's split step is staggered. Now on the right... You notice Farag's split step, uh, split step is not nearly as staggered. It's more neutral because now he's seen the backhand drop. And presumably it's happened, maybe it happened again between 9.5 and 10.9. I'm not sure, but it definitely happened at 9.5. So Farag's brain has registered that, hey, now I can't just come to the back. I have to cover the back and the front, which is why he's more neutral with his split step. This is critical because it goes back to that idea of patterns, breaking patterns. As soon as you've broken that pattern now, it's going to be that much harder for your opponent to, well, they just have to be honest. Your opponent has to be honest on the tee. They can't start cheating. What that means is they're not going to be able to get on the ball as early as they might have been doing so previously. So imagine a situation. You're playing someone. You always hit this straight drive out of the back left, and you're hitting tight balls but your opponent's cutting them off. They're not having the impact that you think they might have on your opponent. Well, why is that? If you've only been hitting that straight drive into that back left corner, your opponent doesn't even have to be on the tee. They can be a foot over to the left side of the court and they're going to cut everything off. Unless the ball's glued, they're going to cut everything off. Why? Because you haven't shown them any other shot. They don't have to be honest. So just by showing multiple shots from the same position, by breaking patterns, you actually slow your opponent down. They're not going to be able to get on the ball quite as early as they would if compared to you hitting only one shot, even if that ball's a pretty good ball consistently. That's powerful, so I hope you process that and register that and then try it when you're playing your own games. So let's keep going over here. I'm going to continue the video now. So now this is what I was talking about. Before Goltia broke the pattern, Farag's back of his foot is going to the back left. After Goltia broke the pattern in the clip on the right, Farag's foot is automatically going to that front. So his right foot is at the back, his left foot is forward because he's it's in his brain that that's a shot option. So this is just the same idea we talked about a moment ago about efficiency. So let's keep watching this. And you see over here, Farag's gonna have to make two movements, which is far less efficient. So he's gone back and then he has to readjust his feet. So he has to push off his left now to now move forward. Whereas in the clip on the right, he's just put that right foot down and he's already moving forward. Far more efficient, smoother, and that has certain implications, which we'll get into in a moment. And you can see it there. See, there's that left foot coming down. I'll show you guys there. There's that left foot coming down in that left clip. And the next thing you're going to notice, the this has a domino effect. You see how vertical Farag is in this clip on the left? His first step is actually in the same spot because he's had to readjust. In the clip on the right, his first step is actually moving forward towards the ball. And if you guys have ever watched sprinting or you know anything about sprinting, if you are more... If you have a bit of a lean, you have better chances of moving forward when you have a bit of a lean. If you compare the clip on the left, he's very vertical, hard to accelerate forward. In the clip on the right, he's a little bit more angled, easier to accelerate forward. So you can see that over there. And then from there, this has implications. So over time, 
if you have to consistently make this movement on the left over and over where you're having to readjust your feet, now when you've had to readjust, you have to apply that much more force and exert that much more energy physically to recover and get that ball. There's also the mental impact of the uncertainty of not knowing what shot's coming next, where do I go, what do I do? And then there's also the mental angst associated with having to make these harder movements because it starts creeping into your brain that I'm getting tired because physically you will start getting more tired if you have to make these kind of movements more often. Now, the other thing that, the other thing that happens is that the more you're under pressure, chances are the looser your returns are going to be. Or if your level is not high enough to even get that ball in the first place, and it's not it's not just your level, anyone, you're going to notice the clip on the left, Farag, or you already, you already know, the clip on the left, Farag does not actually get the ball. If it gets in your brain that I'm under a lot of pressure, I'm giving these loose returns, then the fatigue is kicking in, you're, you're anxious because you don't know what shot's coming next, it creates this negative mental loop in your brain. And when that negative mental loop kicks in, it is very difficult to break out of that. If you want to know more about how you can train yourself on the mindset mental standpoint leave a comment and i will be happy to create a video on that so let's continue watching this clip now so the clip on the left farag is under more pressure clip on the right he's got the less pressure smooth movement you can see we're going to see something pretty cool here in a second uh, almost and check this out so the clip on the left didn't read it because Gaultier broke the pattern. He was more vertical with his movement, had to adjust his feet under more pressure. He had a delayed reaction. Compared to the clip on the right, where he read the ball, he was mentally alert and aware of it because he had seen the shot already happen once, at least once. Look at the outcome. The clip on the left, I've drawn the little lines in to show you. He's got more of a bend in his waist. He's having to reach further with his lunge. His arm is extended more. So he's way more stretched out. It's harder physically on his body as well. The clip on the left, he's not as, his back is not as flat. It's a little bit more upright. His arm is not as extended. It's a little bit closer. He's not as stretched out in his lower body. The one common thing which you'll notice, and I've mentioned this in many videos before from a biomechanical or efficiency standpoint, that knee is behind his heel. So he's got that good shin angle over here, which makes it easier to recover from the shot. So that's a common theme, which I wanted to point out. So now you see the impact that breaking a pattern can have. Check this out. There's one final thing I'm going to share. So you see on the clip on the left, Farag didn't even get the ball on the clip on the right. He retrieved the ball and he managed to defend by hitting it up high and giving himself time to recover to the tee. And you'll see that there, the ball is going nice and high. Okay. That, in my opinion, is super powerful. I hope that you get the same value out of this. By setting up patterns and breaking patterns by hitting more than one shot from one position, you see the effect that that has on your opponent. Physically more demanding, mentally more demanding, can possibly create a negative loop in someone's head unless they're very mentally resilient. So if you're the person who is hitting multiple shots, you, have, you force your opponent to be honest on the tee. Now, believe it or not, your shot quality can actually be a little bit worse and you're not gonna get punished for it. Whereas if you are only hitting one shot from one position, if you're playing an opponent who has some experience, they will start cheating over, and unless your shot quality is really good, they will still be able to cut it off. Now what I encourage you to do is really reflect on this with your own games. Do you hit amazing length or rails, like straight drives up and down the wall, or do you hit amazing cross courts, but somehow they're not having the effect that you think they might have? Well, that might be because you're only hitting that shot from that position. Consciously assess that, think about adding in a second shot and then see what impact that has on your opponent. The first time you change it up and the first time you hit another shot, you will probably just win the point outright. 
because your opponent has never seen that happen. Okay, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. If you have questions, I'd love to chat with you. Let's engage in dialogue. I really appreciate the support that so many of you are giving and your active engagement because it creates a greater community and a body of knowledge for all of us to learn and grow from. Have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video.